Going to talk fitness on the Informer, and the man we go to is from the Elite Academy at uh, Melbourne Uni. His name is Kusal Gudawadana. Welcome. You've been on the tennis trail, uh, first the Australian Open, and yesterday in Adelaide. That's right. That's right, George. Look, it's been a busy month. We <laughs> were. Uh, I was working with. You uh, think? <laughs> I was really busy. Laura Siegmund, uh, world number fifty from Germany. Yeah, she's and a tennis doubles specialist, isn't she? Yeah, she is. I mean, that's where she won her recent success was at the U.S. Open last year. She won yeah, the, yeah. the doubles. Uh, with what did the, she make of Australia? She loves it. Yeah. The Australian Open would is, have liked uh, to have stayed longer and yeah. win some more. That's right. But yeah. uh, then. We finished the Australian Open and then flew to uh, Adelaide, Adelaide for the Ant Adelaide International. And she's now in Doha. She's flown to Doha now. What, more competition? Yes. All right. Uh, what did you find out? Um, it, it, it's fantastic having elite athletes around. I suppose from your point of view too, to, you're able to test so much of your, your theory mm. and the stuff that you guys work on and have worked on for a number of years. Yeah? Just give us a sense. What, what do you do differently with elite athletes that you wouldn't do with me? So don't laugh. If if I were to treat you, uh, you know, it's how regular I need to treat you to get you to a certain level. Now the level, let's say the levels that we are getting you to are the same for elite and you. The amount, or for your level, so the amount of work that we do for you, it might be once every three days or once every five days, perhaps even once a week right. that I might do physio for you. Mm. Uh, with uh, the likes of Laura, I'd be doing two sessions a day. Wow. So the amount of training that they do and also everything so condensed, uh, the regularity is uh, very, very uh, so specific. They're building up enormous lac uh, lactose uh, uh, or lactic acid loads. And you, you make sure that you get in there and break those down and let them let them recover. And that's just one aspect. I mean, that's the, one aspect. That's one aspect. There's wow. you know the neural loading, the muscles, joints, ligaments, everything. Ah. And the load of them when they're playing on these hard courts is is much much different to when they're playing on some of the other courts. For example, like Wimbledon. Yes. Playing on grass, Inter different loads. Different loads. Different stress. Exactly. I mean, there are different athletes who love different surfaces. Yep. And uh, uh, Laura's favourite surface is uh, the clay. So French uh, Open is uh, her favourite. Yeah. It's 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 much more conducive. It's a different bounce again. Uh, they can slide in uh, less of this friction, as they say. Uh, and that's quite a skill to be able to slide in and play a shot and then move once you come to a stop again to the other end of the court. Um, that's right. It, it, Technique is uh, something that uh, takes a while to, to get down pat, but once they do, it's just wonderful to watch. And one of, of course, the best exponents we've ever seen is Nadal. Yes, that's on, right. On that, oh. uh, on that surface. So again, accountability, uh, absolutely huge. You guys need to be accountable for what the work you put in, Yes. but they need to follow the rules too. Huh? Yes, exactly. And, and this is what's so good about uh, the elite athletes. They work very closely with us and they listen. Uh, there are, you know, in the regular public, there's a lot of people many who of them get their advice, but they don't Many listen. of them would be far better disciplined than us too. Yes. Yeah, which is the great thing yes. we don't readily bring to the table when we need to be looked after. Uh, tell me something. Uh, how difficult was it for the for for um, uh, the tennis players who came down under to have to endure that two week uh, lockdown for them? I think it was very difficult because these athletes need to be training three to five. Some some of them train eight hours a day. Now being stuck in a hotel room, it's very difficult. But I think most of them took that in their stride, mm -hmm. and they were able to train in the rooms. So they tried to make the best out of a bad situation. And showed again, uh, adaptability. Exactly. Come up against a, a, a challenge and they have to work around it. Yes. So they have to be resourceful. Um, Self-belief, I dare say, one of the biggest things they can have in their kit. Yeah? Yes. They're very, there's a certain level of belief in themselves which is so vital f for the regular public as well to understand because if you don't put your best foot forward and you don't believe in that, then you're, you're starting off uh, you know, a few steps back anyway. Yeah, you mean halfway down the totem pole? 
That's right. Um, win or learn, um, there, are, there are no losers you, you speak of. I like that. It's an interesting um, uh, way of, 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 of getting us to think a little bit differently. We, I've always been a great believer that we learn more from our losses and more from our mistakes. But you've also got to put your mind in the right space to be able to do that. Because some people actually allow it to get to them and they drop their bundle rather than go, okay, uh, like, a so, uh, like wanting to solve a puddle, a pu puzzle. Mm. Um, this is what I have to do to get on top of it. Exactly. Uh, the elite athlete, different kettle of fish, huh? That's right. So look, with the elite athletes, what they do is when they win, yes, great, let's celebrate, we won. But if they don't you start get, preparing for the next game, yes, exactly. And yeah. even when they lose, it's not that they lost; it's actually a learning. Okay. So it's win or learn, which I think win in everyday learn. life, uh, you know, to have that concept that, okay, whatever I've done, I haven't achieved what I want, but what can I learn from this? It would be a terrific um, uh, sentiment to be able to spread throughout the school base and also through the workforce. Time and time again, you see people, uh, and it probably adds to why we have so many toxic workplaces. Instead of saying, all right, I've made an error, let me work on making it better, or making sure that I don't do it again. Yeah. Um, I, I, in a newsroom, for example, I've always believed that we're only as good as the weakest link. Mm -hmm. And time and time again, whenever we did fail, sure enough, it was the one thing that we didn't put enough work into or we didn't support enough. And if it was a young uh, reporter or a young editor, you need to support them. You need to give them um, the, the ability to, when they are struggling, to know that there's someone to provide the backup. Mm. I dare say the same thing for you. Exactly. How much, uh, how much work did you personally do in that period with, with the tennis? Oh, quite a bit. Every day there was about So they didn't three... see you at Elite? Yes, there was a whole month uh, oh, I was right. not consulting. So I was working uh, purely uh, with Laura. So there was approximately three to four hours a day. You know, there was one to two hours in the morning yep. and, uh, you know, the remainder of an evening. Is it fair to say, and I, can, I think I can say it fairly, we, we, both of us here look at you and we think you've lost about eight kilos. <laughs> you've never looked fitter. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I know you keep saying to us that recovery is, that, is essential, but... My God, uh, you've been actually living the experience uh, with your tennis uh, professional. Yes. You guys look like, you've never looked fitter. Oh, thank Were you. you playing tennis? Were you <laughs> look, just working? I'm working very just hard. Working. <laughs> um, something that we don't give enough uh, credit to, and that is sleep, sleep patterns, sleep behavior, and hours of recovery. We need to understand what sleep is. It's the battery charge. It sure and, is. And it's much more than that too. It is. Why, why are we so reticent? Why do we like carousing to we, we small hours and think, oh, I, I don't want to waste you know, tonight, so I'm going, to, I'm going to party for 11 hours and, and think I can go to work the next day, or better still, I think I can play tennis. Well, this why is... Do, why, do, why are we built like that? People don't know yet. People don't know the importance of sleep. Some of the elite athletes I've worked with, they keep sleep diaries. So if they, on one day, they know they haven't uh, you know, done the proper amount, Try they'll make catch up. up. Yeah. You, know? You, know, you know, we're finding more and more elite sports properties um, coming to the, to the table and offering up new ways to advance the, the recovery of their elite athletes. Do you know that Manchester City, the City Football Group, have provided special beds and they need, if they need to take them with them on coaches, they build them on the coach, on, on the aircraft, again, the special beds, so that their elite athletes are sleeping on a platform that they know will give them the most rest. That sounds extreme, but if you want to be a winner and re reproduce day in, day out, and week in, week out, Yes. That's the level of, uh, of involvement that uh, we're seeing more and more of. That's extraordinary. So if That's the elite great. athletes are doing it, why don't we do it properly? Exactly. And these are the secrets, I'd like to say, what elite athletes do, but you can replicate in, in everyday life. So uh, people like you and I, 
you know, it's this technology that we're talking about having another mattress or a bed that yep. uh, they their favourite bed. Just replicate that. You know? Are we seeing more telemetry too? Are we seeing apps now that give these athletes and, and, and elite athletes uh, an opportunity to do a catch up as you touched on earlier? Yes, yes. So there's a, almost a monitor. There are, it's there the, are. The, and one of the best things here is you're going to find things like, okay, sleep monitoring, uh, fluids, things like that. But ultimately, you know, you can monitor everything in yep. your performance yep. and how easily you can perform. So I talk about sleep a lot, but if you don't get enough sleep, all that hard training you've done goes to waste. Uh, Google and Fitbit have now joined in as one. Okay. So it, that's a tremendous aid. And wherever you go, whatever you do, it keeps telling you, need to drink more water, yeah. need to uh, take more time to, what is it? Mindfulness, improve yes. your mindfulness. Um, these are things that five years ago we weren't talking about. Mm -hmm. You may have been, but the rest of the world wasn't. Um, why is it suddenly we're finding all these things out? Have we been slow to the party or is it there's been so much more research done? I think the awareness wasn't there. So right. if you knew about it, but the greater populace didn't. No, awareness is the key here that uh, being in the moment is so vital. Uh, you, we don't have to worry about the past. That's a memory. We don't have to worry about the future because that's imagination. In the present moment is where a human being is the most powerful. And when you are in the present moment, when you are getting tested and mm. so on, you're doing everything what you are capable of in this, in this moment right here, right now, which is what elite athletes do. Fantastic. They don't, you know, the ball is coming to them. They're not thinking about, oh my gosh, I, I have a flight to catch. Or, no, 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 no. They're, they're just focused on that. Yeah. But for regular people like you and I, it's a huge concept to understand. And the other thing that happened during this period last year was COVID. Yeah. You know, it brought to the forefront or brought to the fore the issues of uh, mental stress. Oh, there's no doubt about it. We're, we've seen many, many issues uh, and many episodes uh, of people uh, feeling unwell, feeling deflated, feeling demoralized and constantly we keep hearing that we need to do more, we need to go out there and show them support and I noticed that the federal government and the state governments have come to the party and they're throwing more funding because they too have now come to realize that uh, it's all well and good to create lockdowns and to, uh, to impede people's uh, uh, work schedules and, um, and movement but at the same time there's, there's an unintended consequence and we've now got to attend to it. Yes. Yeah. And once again, it's awareness, isn't it? A lot yeah. of people are talking about mental health well, now. Look, more and more of us, especially at the Informer, what we're trying to do is destigmatize. Yeah? Take away the stigma and, and, and talk about things. Mental, mental illness yeah. uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I've been in the business 40 years. 40 years ago, you didn't talk about something. You, you, had, you, you wished the person all the very best. Mm -hmm. You hoped that they, they had access to the best medical advice, but you didn't do any more. Today, we're being encouraged more and more to listen, uh, to be supportive as best we can. We're not all doctors. And um, so it's enlightening. And especially now it's being run through schools. Yes. And, uh, and I'm wondering, did you have an opportunity to take uh, your, 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 your tennis professional to any of the schools and, and uh, give them uh, you know, an opportunity to, to chat about the life of a, an athlete, an elite athlete, and the, uh, the pressures that exist within? The, uh, we couldn't because uh, by the time Laura came out of lockdown, yep. we were getting ready for the Australian Open and then we had the five day lockdown uh, okay. during the Open and then Adelaide was a bubble. Now, before we, we, we close this off, if, if I was to ask you to describe Laura as an, the elite athlete, what, what were the things that, you, that impressed you, that she showed you in the time that you guys were together? Very professional. Yep. Uh, has focused. Very focused, very professional, not just from the tennis side, but from managing herself as an athlete. And Eating, it's all about drinking. Everything, all of those things. Right. And then from a team perspective. So although she's a single athlete, 
and I think you touched on this just before, you need to have a good team around you. Yeah. And she's very good at keeping that team together uh-huh. in communication. Yeah. Uh, so that I'm wondering if that impressive. helps their mental health as well. Oh, of course. Yeah, they all lean on one another mm. and makes uh, the international travel that they would be doing. Yes. Uh, and uh, this uh, cosseted um, uh, com- competition where they're closed in a, in, a, in a venue for two or three weeks. Yeah, it, so it would be challenging. You know, the, the team is as strong as the weakest link, as you said. Yeah. So she's very good at finding the best people on that team. Yeah, and she's probably great at being a problem solver. Very good. That's why it allows them to win. <laughs> Uh, Kusal Gunawadana is our guest uh, as he, whenever we want to talk fitness, he's the, the go-to man. Uh, he's the guy we reach out to. Um, I want to talk to you about some of the new uh, strategies that uh, we're hearing more and more of. Next time we get you in the studio, we'll touch on that. And more importantly, do you have uh, the best advice for someone with a tennis elbow? Yes, it's coming from your neck. It's coming from my neck? Yes. I've been loaded down again. We need to speak to the executive producer. Thank you very much, Chris. I'll speak to you soon. Thanks, George.